Hi, Walter Carter here at Carter Vintage Guitars with a Gibson Hart guitar from 1916. This was the next big thing back at that time, or so Gibson thought. Gibson made these things from the very first catalog of the company, 1902, 1903. It, as strange as it looks, it was not really uh, a totally new idea at the time. The, the carved arch top was, that was Orville Gibson's idea. But the idea of a guitar with some extra bass strings had been around for a while. In the late 1900s, it was sort of an anything goes period for guitar. It had only been around in its modern form since about 1850. So people didn't have necessarily a mindset as to what a guitar was supposed to be. Gibson just extended the concept of a carb top mandolin to include the guitar. They just extended it a little bit more and, and did this thing. Uh, it's a guitar here, six strings, and then however many strings you want. This is played like a harp, no frets, all open strings. Gibson had four models in their first catalog. This thing is a style U. Uh, there was also a U1, and they were both 21 inches wide. This is this is huge, but it's not too deep. By the time of their next catalog, the harp guitar offering at Gibson had been whittled down to uh, just this one model. If you play just a simple progression, like that, you've only used the top four strings of the guitar. That kind of unbalances the whole progression because the key that it's in, D, is still a four string chord. So what if you had a drop D? There's a D. Uh, there are all kinds of other pitches that these strings are tuned to. So you have a D and you've got a D sharp. And then you can go to the E that you already have and to the A. So you, you have a much fuller I can't believe I did that. It took 15 minutes of trial and error to try to figure out just something that simple. And that is probably the beginning of the problem for Gibson with this instrument. Gibson thought this was the best thing since sliced bread. There was a guy named Lewis Williams, who was one of the five founding partners of the company. He was the son of a preacher, and he had an evangelistic uh, attitude towards Gibson. He's the one who wrote all the flowery, biblical-tinged uh, catalog copy that made Gibson catalogs of the day so thick. And in promoting the harp guitar, the headline of, of that text was, when gray hairs applaud, progress may ask, what have I done amiss? In other words, if the old folks are liking what you're doing, you're probably not doing anything new. Gibson's catalogs were massive pamphlets, and across the middle, the harp guitar was always featured. You couldn't promote it any more than Gibson did, yet it just never quite caught on. And the reason is obvious from the way I'm fumbling around on this thing. It's really awkward and difficult to pick up. You can learn to do this. There are people that, that still play these instruments beautifully now, but for the most part, the size and, and, and the awkwardness of play just just kept it from ever catching on. And finally, by the late 30s, Gibson had quit putting it in the middle of the catalog. There are a lot of instruments that were designed and made without even knowing the kind of music that would be played on. The Stratocaster, for one, the, the Fender Jazz Bass, and with the attitude of build it and they will come, well, we're still waiting for them to come to the harp guitar. Mm -hmm. 